Today's flippin' shenanigans are brought to you by Squarespace. But more on that in a bit. I've been getting ready for a road trip out to VCF Midwest in Chicago, and I've been trying to figure out the right gaming device to bring along with me. At first I thought Steam Deck, but no, it's too powerful. Then I thought Game Gear. But I don't want to deal with all these AA batteries. Then I found this. It's a 2004 Sony Ericsson flip phone with dedicated gamepad attachment. Ah, perfection. And today we're going to try and pair this with the computer, send some games over to it, and see just how much fun people were having back in 2004. So stay tuned. And if you enjoy the ridiculous gimmicks of early 2000s consumer tech, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. So this is 2004's Sony Ericsson Z600, and today we're just going to have some silly fun with it. We'll take a quick closer look and revel in some of its quirky gimmicks. But first, a rundown of its specs. Within this 3.9 ounce folding clamshell lurks a massive 2 inch display pumping out 65,000 colors with an eye-melting resolution of 128 by 160. It sports both infrared on the side here and Bluetooth, and it also supposedly supports J2ME games, which are apps built with the Java platform and meant to run on many different mobile phones of the time. You know, for a phone, you might even say this thing is pretty smart. But when I saw someone post a picture of this thing with this ridiculous snap-on gamepad, I desperately wanted one, and I just so happened to find a complete set on eBay, controller, phone, and working charger and battery from Greece. So here we have it, the pinnacle of 2004 flip phone tech. Well, that might be kind of a stretch. Anyway, let's take a closer look at this thing. All right, so phone and gamepad. And just look at this stuff. Have you ever seen a more early 2000s looking phone than this? Unless, you know, you had a phone in the early 2000s. It has the lovely black and white LCD on the front, Sony Ericsson, and this shell, which is of course removable because you need to personalize your device. And uh, yeah, reviewers did not like the thickness of this, which I think for 2004 was a little on the chunky side. Nonetheless, <laughs> it is very much a flip phone. Infrared over here. Oh, the camera button. Speaker for speakerphone on the back. Volume up and down. Uh, blinky light to show you if it's charging. And then your 0 0.1 megapixel camera right there. Opening up to reveal the beautiful interior, we have the aforementioned two inch screen. You have all the keys you would ever need to send a text message. And now you might notice that it says inactive SIM up here. Well, that's because this thing would not boot into the operating system without a SIM card installed. And this takes the big old beefy SIM cards of yesteryear. If we pop the back cover off, here is our 780 milliamp hour battery, which still holds a decent charge. And reviewers back in the day said you could get nine hours of talk time out of this. Under there, we have a T-Mobile SIM card that I found on the floor at work. And I had to use one of these SIM adapters to finagle it in there. And it does allow the phone to boot. So you clip this in as so. And it's in there pretty good. And the gamepad just plugs right into the bottom here. And game controller attached. Okay, there are some preloaded games on here, as I mentioned, but let's try to pair this to a computer via its Bluetooth and send some more games over to it. Right after this word about today's sponsor, Squarespace. Create a fast, beautiful, and rich web experience for your business or brand using Squarespace's powerful all-in-one platform. It's really easy to get started, like say I wanted to build the world's best fan site for 
2000s flip phone technology. There's tens of us. I could build it in just minutes with Squarespace's new next generation fluid engine, which features powerful drag and drop technology and enables you to customize every detail of your customer's experience on desktop and mobile. And that's on top of optimizing for SEO, managing a mailing list, watching your analytics and much more. So check out squarespace.com slash action retro today for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use code action retro to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. All right, so I have here my PowerBook G4 12 inch, which is exactly the kind of computer you might have in 2004. And we're going to use Bluetooth to pair it to the flip phone. All right, so on the phone here, we'll do more and then Bluetooth is already turned on. And then on the PowerBook, we will set up a Bluetooth device this is a mobile phone. And look, it found it. Continue. All right, Sean's PowerBook G4, add to devices. Yes. Enter the pass key here. All right, pairing successfully completed. The Internet Archive has a file with 5,000 J2ME games and I've downloaded that, picked out a few of what looked like the most interesting to me, and uh, put them on this here USB flash drive. I've got a bunch of stuff on here. There's several versions of what claims to be Doom. Incoming file. Yes, receiving item. Going at a blazing fast, five kilobytes per second. Oh, check it out, MDoom 1.0 worked <laughs> what in tarnation is this all right we need to hook up the gamepad for this one <laughs> get ready for this extreme 3d action <laughs> what in the world i'm gonna say that this is not an official port of doom <laughs> Okay, so it is many, many hours later because I have been trial and erroring my way through huge thousand file archives from the Internet Archive of old mobile games. And <laughs> I've gone down some serious rabbit holes. Uh, one thing I've learned is that this has a very, very old version of the Sony Java runtime environment, meaning that most games don't work with it, and we'll just say invalid application. I also found that there are native Sony Ericsson games, and some of those actually do work on this. So <laughs> we're going to take a look at both. Look at this. Super Mario. I was shocked that this one actually worked. And uh, pretty sure this isn't an official Super Mario game. But whoever made this went through quite a lot of effort. <laughs> Look at this. How good is that for a random bootleg Super Mario? It's just like Im impossible to control. Oh my God. <laughs> well, it crashed. All right, I was very excited to see Wolfenstein 3D, however, this is one of the games that uh, doesn't work with this old of a Java, so invalid application. Bubble Bobble was one of my favorite games as a kid on Nintendo, and I was very psyched to see that there was a port here for ancient Java-powered phones. However, I think it was designed for a phone with a much bigger screen than this. I mean, that's Bubble Bobble but I'm pretty sure this is only the top left corner of the play field and I'm missing everything, including my guy. All right, let's check out some native games, which I've tested some of these. I have one called Jeff. <laughs> my favorite so far has been Dogfight. 
which is just a very simple, you're flying around an airplane and shooting at people <laughs> kind of game. Oh, and I've been destroyed by the enemy. Now look, I destroyed the enemy, but he hit me and I'm crashing. I can still shoot while I'm crashing. And good use of the phone's vibration. <laughs> All right, so that is the dogfight game. Actually quite good as far as mobile games go. Samurai's Adventure was another one that really surprised me. Look at this. This is a platformer. It's actually pretty smooth. You can crouch, you can jump, you can swipe at these people. Come here, you evil villain. I don't know why I'm fighting you, but apparently you've got to go. Whoa, look at that. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4. Bob Burnquist, Bam Margera, spelled wrong. <laughs> Bucky Lasik, Chad Muska, nice. It looks like California games for Nintendo. Oh, look at this. All right. Do a kick flip. Do a heel flip. Did you know that Rodney Mullen invented most of those tricks? Okay, this game is just called Jeff. <laughs> I have to know what is Jeff? And who is Jeff? Should we be afraid of Jeff? Let's find out together. Okay, this is probably the best looking game so far. Top down. Can jump. Do I have any weapons? Why are these things trying to kill me? What is Jeff supposed to, how can Jeff defend himself? I think I just picked up a coconut and I'm dead. <laughs> and that's Jeff. He lived a short life, but it was a life full of meaning. What that meaning was, we will never know. Okay, well, that was a lot more fun than I was expecting. Oh, and if you'd like to see me play the rest of these games, I think I'm gonna do a bonus video on Patreon. And uh, yeah, there's some pretty weird stuff. In any event, if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more shenanigans like this, please subscribe down below. And if you're going to VCF Midwest this year, I'll see you there. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Alex Hoffman, Andrew Nicholson, April White, Camila Noseda, Chris Allegretta, Chris Biggs, Chris Calderon, Chris Nelson, Control Alt Reese, Daniel Hubbard, Frodo Jedi, Gaspar Heller, George Rosansky, Greg Rutke from Rutke Mods, Harris Brody, James Fryman, James Laurie, Jason Papaz, Jason Ezel, Justin Reed, Lyle Truid, Matthew Kroll, Paul Spencer, Ryan, Scott Cedarbaum, Scott Thompson, Sutek, Tom Woodfin and Unknown Soldier 41, who are my highest tiered patrons and all of my Patreon supporters for helping to make these videos possible.